Hey, what's going on guys and welcome to another episode of Building on WordPress. My name is Josh Donnelly and in today's video, we are going to take a look at an experimental element I've been creating for the Cornerstone Builder. I think it's kind of cool. It is not perfect, but I wanted to nerd out a little bit and share it with you guys. Now, if you are not a user of the Cornerstone Builder, then this video probably is not for you. So without further ado, let's dive in. Now, as you can see here, I have a couple of different sections on the page and I've heard it a lot that people really want a way to easily add gradients without going out to a third-party site, creating the gradients, and then finding a way to CSS those gradients into their page, which you can absolutely do. It's a nice, lightweight, easy way to do things. But if you wanted something a little more native, I created a nifty little element using nothing more than the native div element and custom parameters within Cornerstone. So let's take a look at how this works. Well, we can jump over to our elements pane here, and we can search for gradient, and you'll notice I now have a a gradient overlay element that I can use here. And this can be dragged out in many different scenarios. Because I wanna add this as a background inside of this section, I'm going to first click on the section itself. I'm gonna come up here to the children area and where it says add row, I'm gonna hold down the command or control key to add an element and I'm gonna type in gradient overlay. Now I can click on this and it will immediately add that to the background of my section. Now it doesn't look like a whole lot happened and that's because I haven't configured this yet. So now I'm going to click on the gradient overlay and now you'll notice I have a nice selection of gradient controls right here in my workspace. Currently I'm on linear, but I could select a radial gradient. I have various colors. I'm gonna go ahead and set this to two. I can adjust the angle, the repeat, but let's go ahead and add some colors in here and see how all of this works. So for our first color here, let's go ahead and just set this to something like a green. And then our second color, let's go ahead and set this to a blue. Now that looks a little bit weird, so we might wanna adjust our stops, which is the next section down here. And we can simply drag this slider or we could play around with percentages I might do something like 20 and 70 to get a nice gradient across the board here. Now that's looking pretty good already, but what if I wanna change the angle? Well, I can grab this slider and I could just turn this a little bit here and you'll notice the angle of my gradient is now changing. And if I wanted to get all artsy on things, I could also set a repeat and then we get something like this here where maybe we'd wanna change our stops a little bit to 10 and 20 and get something like this here with our gradient. So we can have a little bit of fun. Let's go ahead and turn off that repeat and add our color stops back in. Let's do 20 and 70 here. Now we might wanna add a third color. So we can simply come up to colors here and add a third. And now let's go ahead and add a yellow in there as well. And then we might need to adjust our stops a little bit to blend it all together. So maybe we do something like 80 on that yellow and now it's starting to blend in and maybe we bring our color stop two down to 50. So we got something like this here. And then the final thing down here is positioning. If for some reason you wanted this overlay to be above everything else, you could come in here and add some Z index, which would then bring it up to the front. Now we can't see anything, so we can come into our colors and we can adjust the transparency of each one of these colors on a color by color basis to see what is behind it. So that's looking pretty good right there. Now, what if we wanted a radial uh, gradient instead. Well, we can simply come right up to our type and change this to radial. All of our other controls are preserved, but then we have some new radial controls. So we can do a shape as a circle or an ellipse here. So let's go ahead and change it to an ellipse. Then we can do farthest side, closest corner, some things you can play around with here. Positioning, maybe we want this in the top left, so it'll put it up right here. And then if we wanted to get artsy again, we could go with the repeat, which is going to make it look kind of funny here, but maybe we play with our stops and we go 5, 20, 30. And now we've got a cool repeat there. So how could we use this in other instances? Well, let's scroll down to something like this and say, you know, here we have three cards, but now we want an overlay on these cards. We can simply come in here, we can grab our gradient overlay, we can drag that right out into this div here where we have our gradient overlay. We'll set this to two, and we'll choose something like black and color two, maybe it's a fuchsia color here like this. Then we'll come in here and do 2070. And maybe we want this to be coming up from the bottom like that. And then we want it to fade out with the fuchsia here. So we might do, I don't know, 35. And the black we might take down just a little bit with transparency there. And now I think that's looking pretty good as an overlay. We could do this again. We could grab the gradient overlay, drag it out onto this div here. And then in this one, we could use three colors and we're just gonna have a little bit of fun here. 
Uh, we'll go yellow and then we'll go orange. And we're gonna want some transparency on these, but let's go ahead and work on our color steps first. We'll go 20, 50, 75, something like this here looks pretty good. And then we can come into our colors and we'll bring the blue down maybe to 70 here. We'll bring the yellow down randomly and we'll bring the orange down randomly. And now we have a nice little gradient there. And the best part is this is just a div. So if you wanted to add things inside of it, you can simply drag things inside of that div, click on the gradient overlay again. And if you wanna make adjustments, you can jump into the primary tab and treat this just like a div here where we could say flex box center and that text would then be centered inside of there. So a lot of control. We could even take this a step further and just apply it to a call to action or something like this here, where we go into our elements pane, we grab our gradient overlay, we drag that out, it automatically positions itself to the background there. We'll go ahead and pick some colors. We'll go one and two, and then we'll go ahead and set this to a two color linear gradient at 30, 75. And then we'll just add a little bit of transparency here so that we can see our ocean in the background. And there we have it. Now, you'll notice there's a little bit of bleed over on this call to action here. And that's simply because the parent container needs to be set to hidden. So we'll go ahead and do hidden, hidden. And now our gradient is no longer spilling over the edge. So as you can see, a nice little element that can speed up your gradient workflows for some simple gradients. Now, how is this built? Well, all it is is some parameters that we've set up so that we can control these things here. And then a whole bunch of custom CSS inside of the div itself. So it's all being applied to that specific element. If this is something you guys would be interested in, leave me a note in the comments below and I can figure out how we could share this and build upon it together. As always, I hope you guys find these videos useful and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.